is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. What are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. More of all kilometers. Oh, 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 they can't! They can't! This time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to run. Cronky! Time for the insider who gets off! Passenger throws the block, and he will keep him behind him. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hello everyone, welcome to Racebot TV. We will actually have something on our screen for you in just one moment's time, we promise. But hello, welcome to Saturday morning here on Racebot TV and on our Racing Live and welcome to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for the Pro Mazda Championship. Will Vincent along with the one and only Mr. David Haynes and well, David, this is a very fun, very interesting track for a lot of people because of the fact that it's one that it's got a street course feel to it and of course it's got the famous 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 wall of champions correct yeah you got the walls very close by we've got some tight bends we've got some long straights it'll be an interesting 19 lap race here for these pro mazda cars yeah indeed so so there we have now got the track at the very least up for you and we've got ourselves about a minute and a half left of practice before we head ourselves to the starting grid for this one. We're going to be running for a total of 19 laps here today as we have a look at the weather conditions heading into this event. 76 degrees Fahrenheit, 55%. Race relative humidity. There's a couple of clouds in the sky, but the thing that I noticed, David, 14 mile an hour winds here. Indeed, in the middle of the St. Lawrence Seaway here in Montreal, I'm sure the wind can pick up. We've got some rapids nearby. We'll see if that has an effect because these cars can pick up quite a draft. If it's a headwind, that'll have a very big effect on where the passing opportunities are. Yeah, as uh, I'm just going to show you, of course, uh, the drivers, um, the times as they stand right now, even. 
as we've got ourselves about 40 seconds left for qualifying. It is Thomas Jordan who is leading the way right now. 1 minute 32.460, 17 1,000 to a second is Martin Anudlis then in second place. Josh Thompson in third and Tim Hendrickson fourth place. Ollie Peacock right now rounding out your top five. Note that your top three drivers are very close in qualifying, David, but then a big gap down to four. Yeah, I guess that's what we're going to be looking for into turn one, turn two in the opening laps because that is some very close times between those three. Yeah, as the qualifying will tick down to zero and that means we can show you your starting grid for this round of the pro mazda championship so actually let's get the grid up properly for you then it's starting grid here today as we say thomas jordan australia new zealand 132.460 martin anula second place in the number six car, 17, 1,000 was back. Josh Thompson in third and Tim Hendrickson in the fourth position. Back to row number three, Ollie Peacock and Andrew Bedozo with Gabriel Perez and Asomi Yamakado, uh, Yamakado even, in P number eight outside of row number four. Marino Martin Garcia in ninth place. Daniel Berrison in tenth. Fabio Birchold in eleventh and Fabio Oki then in 12 position it's a battle of the fabios in row number six here david yep battle of the fabios i guess it's pretty close honestly a lot of the way down this pack not only at the start we'll, we'll, at the top end we'll be looking for some battles but in the mid pack i reckon it will be close as well yeah as we say 19 laps is what we're going to be running for here today and here's a beautiful look then at this racetrack it was a favorite from the second it came on to iRacing the drivers are lining themselves up almost ready to go running for 19 laps around this beautiful facility it's a favorite actually after the Indianapolis Motor Speedway this has been the highest attended motor race of all time a couple of years ago all the drivers are now on the grid we believe maybe oh no we're just waiting for one driver now um to get himself settled down and he's got himself what well, not long to do so actually as the drivers will just sit patiently and wait do any final last checks that they need to do number one machine thomas jordan gonna lead the cars in towards turn number one so now lights will go on on top of the gantry getting ourselves ready to race here in the Pro Master Championship. Let's go on. And we will go green. Great job from second place there. Might get the lead into the first corner. I think so. He does. So we've got a battle going on all the way through your field already. Look at that. As they swarm down, we've got contact. Oh my word, the number one machine. Well, he's had a miserable start to this event as that is the driver of Thomas Jordan. He started on pole position lost second place now he's been hit for the second time thomas jordan for one down to the very very rear part of your field that is a horrible start that's the last thing you want he got that tap in the second corner he managed to hold on to that they were three wide and then it just hasn't worked as that approach that should be. yep so now as a consequence of that what we've got david is martin Anudlis. he is storming away 1.2 seconds already he's ahead of josh thompson as they work themselves through that second chicane and now down towards a hairpin for the first time. Martin Arnold has missed out on the pole by the slenderest of margins, so now that uh, Thomas Jordan is out of the race, it's not a surprise, I suspect, to see him maybe try and get away with this. Yeah, Jordan, by the way, has brought his car on towards Pit, Pit Road. He's had to take a toe back. Another driver's had to do so as well. That is um, Ryan Moore, I presume then for the driver of Jordan. That must have been some form of suspension damage caused by that second hit into turn five. Yeah, these open wheel cars, I'm not sure you can take too much of a hit before you've really, really compromised your race car. And uh, it's an unfortunate uh, turn of events for him because we were really hoping to see a good race between our top three starters. Yeah, as uh, your uh, tell you one thing actually, Josh Thompson took a full, get this, four times per second out of Martin Lucas in the second sector of that first lap. So now he is only nine tenths of a second. But no, take that back, seven tenths of a second right now behind Martin as they work themselves through 
Turn three and four again. This is the Radicals machine. Uh, have a look at that. So we'll just cycle through now down towards this very difficult turn number six, actually. A lot of people kind of forget about this corner, but you break down for it, David, and you really need the momentum coming up onto this long straightaway. Well, it's where we saw uh, Sebastian Vettel lose mm. the 2011 uh, Canadian Grand Prix to Jensen Button on the last lap. It's an important corner of this circuit. It's one of the slower corners, but it's very, very important to get right. This is an interesting track with a lot of tight, slow corners, but that casino straight on the back straight, very long, great opportunity to get a draft, and Josh Thompson, he might have a go at it into the final chicane on this lap. Ali Peacock involved in an incident there with Andrew Pedoso. That actually um, means he's going to fall down, losing five, six places. Replay coming up for you now. He caught this one live, and he's had to put it off the racetrack as well. So another retiree here. This one happened down at the hairpin. We're going to have a look at our aerial coverage brought to you by And One Design, official graphics partner of Race Spot TV. Here he is then. Uh, number 13 car comes down to the inside. That is Andrew Pedoso, and he basically just runs into the side of that number eight car by the looks of that. Second look. On board with Ollie Peacock this time by. And well, David, what we want to have a look here is the angle that Ollie Peacock takes into this airpin. Car comes down to his inside. Now, actually, I will say on second look, it looks like Peacock actually either got a bit of oversteer or didn't realize there was a car actually on his inside. That hairpin is also an interesting braking zone because there's just a few couple lines you can take with a, a late apex potentially there trying to set up the next run. You don't know uh, exactly what the car behind or ahead is going to do. It's a tough corner. Yeah, as we've got a nice one in that battle going on, we've got ourselves. This is great for Gabriel Perez. He's now in fifth place. He's got the number 11 machine right behind him. That is Osama uh, Yamakado as they'll come down towards seconds came the seconds came down towards the hairpin again one thing i do love about this series uh, especially this time slot baby it is a truly international time we've got drivers from asia we've got drivers from australasia um and then we've also got um drivers from europe all running this one at the same time and it has got a fantastic kind of international feel to it which um i love quite honestly yeah, and all of them were racing in Canada with the Japanese engine car. So, fantastic bit of uh, international motorsport here, and I'm loving it. Yeah, as uh, Fabio, okay, uh, looking down to the inside, has to back out of it in towards that final chicane. Bianco of Quebec, the War of Champions, is looming as they come underneath the Napa Auto Parts Bridge, complete that number four of 19 in this one. Let's go back, though, to the front of your field because. Now your top three drivers are separated by 1.1 second. We're on board with Tim Hendrickson right now and in the Benelux number two car. And it looks to me though that Josh Thompson, um, oh sorry, Josh Thompson has taken the race lead away um, from Martin and Lucas and, and Martin's just falling back all of a sudden. Now these cars do have a tendency if you overwork the tires early on, David, to really become difficult to drive. And I think that might have been what happened to that six car. Yeah, well, I saw it, and Josh Thompson just got a good run down the casino straight and into the last chicane. He propelled off, and he didn't take the, the move. He set up his exit out of the chicane perfectly down the pit straight to take that lead. Yeah, and that's one thing that quite often drivers will try and do. Rather than making that move necessarily down into the final chicane, if you do wait, I mean, we've seen it happen so many times over the years, you get a better run out of the corner, you can overtake them into turn one. Because the thing is, well, into turn number one, even if you have to go to the outside, turn number two, you then have the inside line into that corner. So it does create an interesting set of passing opportunities as well. Tim Hendrickson working himself through that final chicane right now, on board of him again as he's closed that gap down to three tenths for a second. Martin's car just does not look that stable anymore. Yeah, he's just having some trouble with that final chicane as well. The curves around here, some of them are quite tall and they can upset a car like this. So you've got to be careful not to take too much of that. And I think that's one of the things that's hurting him. Yeah, down your pack a little bit further. You've got yourself um, Garcia in the number 12 machine versus Daniel Berrien as they'll come down to turn number one and turn number two. I will say one thing as well, whilst we're talking about these are what they call more entry-level cars into the world of IndyCar. They're kind of the third tier down. Of course, third tier racing in Europe. Mick Schumacher won his first European Formula 3 
race today at the same track that his father won his, well actually, not only won his first race, but took part in his first Grand Prix as well in 1991, winning of course in 1992, one year later. So congratulations David to Mick Schumacher adding to the Schumacher lineage. Yeah, it's a, it's a good result for him, but it's also a fantastic story for everyone who was a fan of Michael Schumacher. Uh, what a legacy and what a talent. And uh, I'm very glad to hear that, that his, uh, his son is carrying on that motorsport tradition. All I'm glad about is that mixed racing in Europe and not in America, um, so that they, we don't have to name that, that sponsor that Schumacher's had for so many years. Because I tell you what, I'm 30 years old, David. I've seen that sponsor for, what, 20 years? I still can't I'm not sure what you're referencing, but uh, if you have trouble with it, I'm sure <laughs> my English-speaking self will also have trouble with it. As another run there by Hendrickson in towards um, number one. Can't do anything into one. Can't slide it down to the inside of that TNT racing machine through turn number two. So, battle in terms of that second position staying where it is, but we have got a battle going on right now. P7, P8 on track, and this is a number 11 car. We're on board with him. Uh, down into eighth place right now is Osama um, Yamakado. Uh, so, on the exit of turn number two, now down towards turn number three and four on track and well this is where the battles are down here mid-pack and one thing I've, I'm keeping an eye out right on right now is Daniel Berrison in that number four car because all of a sudden he's come alive he is monstering the back of Fabio Bertold's car and well you don't know exactly what setup these guys are running but there is a compromise to be made around here with how much wing angle you want there's some slower corners and it can be beneficial there, but if you trim too much wing out for straight line speed, you might suffer through this section of the track. Yeah, indeed, so as we've been having a look on board of him towards that hairpin, as uh, we've got a car off that is a number 10 machine. Um, get ourselves a replay and try and figure out what's happened with him. This is Alan Jolly in the number 10 car. Was running down about P number 12 and lose it down at the second chicane. Uh, I think it's those high curves I was yeah. telling you about. I think on the uh, second part of the left hand of the chicane, he's just got that thing beached on one of those high curves and it's spun around on him. Yeah, and that's our whole thing, that second chicane. Now, certain cars, you can run these curves better than others. These cars here, because of the fact that, you know, they're smaller tyres compared to Formula cars, and also the power to weight ratio isn't as big, um, as compared to a for example Indy Lights or an actual Indy car. It means that if you do get onto the car, it, you just lose all forms of traction. As uh, just keep back up through the field. Um, Fabio Okoye right now in the fifth place, hunting down Gabriel Perez. What we are gonna do is show you on the left hand side of your screen the people who's been moving up and down in your field here today. And I will say that Fabio um, Okoye is up from row number six in your field up into your top five right now and he's brought the other Fabio with him who he overtook in the first lap. Yeah, fourth place down to about ninth is a very, very exciting little battle. These guys just cannot get away from each other. Yeah, and Gabriel Perez himself, he's up three places from where he started here today. Biggest loser inside your top ten is Andrew Pedroso. Now, of course, he's the driver who we saw having the incident um, battle up number three of this event, which uh, down at the hairpin, it looks like he might have gotten himself a little bit of damage as a consequence. Always had another incident because he's now fallen well behind this kind of second pack on track. As now he is basically running in no man's land. In terms of Tyree, by the way, we've had ourselves Ollie Peacock out, Thomas Jordan, of course, we know he's the biggest failure of the day. Starting on pole position, down to last by turn number four. But David Villa out of this event as well. One driver's made a pit stop and come back out. That is Ryan Moore in the number 14 car. But let's go back and have a look at this battle then. Fourth place on board. Fabio Okoye versus Gabriel Perez. Taking two very different lines in towards one. You can do that. You can carry a lot more speed through the left hander, but it tightens and slows your line through the right hander. So whether you're attacking or defending, you might want to pick one or the other, whether you want to try and hold that track position or set up a good run out of the right-hander. Yeah. And now into turn six. See, using a little bit of the curb there, but really just touching the white line to help the car turn around. Now into the second chicane. We're going to stay on board with Fabio Okoye, actually, in that hunt against Gabriel Perez. Let's see how both these drivers take the second chicane. 
be useful at curbs. Again, using the curb in the first part just to help the car turn there. It's a short little wheelbase car, so I can understand why you get it up on the curb. If it starts rotating, it's going to be difficult to catch that. Now we've got an incident, um, and we're going to show it to you now. This is John Lock. We believe this is having a moment. This could well actually be into that second chicane again. Number 19 car from Australia, New Zealand club. Second chicane. Well, he doesn't even make the apex. The apex is on the opposite side of the track compared to what he was doing there, David. John Lott, well, yeah, it's a moment, but he just outbreaked himself completely. Yeah, if you're in that deep, you m might need to wake up to yourself and decide just to miss that corner. You can go across the grass. You'll get a slowdown penalty, but you won't spin. So maybe you just got in too hot and didn't have the sense of mind to abandon the corner. Yeah, we've got our first victim of the Wall of Champions. There is probably a virtual. We're just going to rewind this tape back a little bit further. As he comes down in towards that final chicane to the right hand side. Kips that high curb and straight into the wall of champions. In fact, also always taking uh, one other driver with him there. That was, I believe, the number 11 machine. Well, all the champion strikes once again, David. It always does, and that's why it's got such an infamous name, is that it's a tricky section, the wall's right there, and anyone, anyone could come a crop of that. Yeah, um, back up through your field a little bit. Josh Thompson, by the way, has now pulled out a bit of a gap, two seconds over the driver of Margin Anoodalus, who, by the way, has resisted that charge from earlier on from Ten Hendrickson. Hendrickson looks as though now he is going to remain in the third place, but replay now, um, not with you. We want to have a replay uh, with Paolo, because he's had a moment. 15 machine, down in turn number six. Car almost, the suspension's dead on that car. The right rear suspension gets hit on that one, and that's game over for him, David. Quite a few retirements starting to happen at this point. I I'm not sure if these drivers are losing their focus, the tires are going away, or the weather is unfavorable but uh, it's obviously tough out there for these guys. It is indeed. Don't forget, by the way, in Racebot TV, we have got another event taking place right now. That is the International GT3 Series. We're gonna check in very quickly with um, Paul Smith, Jack Stars, and Tobias Brockman. Point 0.3 seconds, point zero point one three seconds now. Can Luca make a move into five and six this time? I don't think he can. I wonder whether the damage is actually hindering a little bit of it. Because Carl is going to have more speed in a straight line. And that's going to actually favour that 570 as opposed to Luca Pianperanti who's going to have to get it done on the brakes. Yeah, he can be pretty lucky to be in the draft right now. Otherwise, he would lose a lot of time. Um, since uh, the draft actually compensates a little bit the aero damage, but since they're both, um, are they both on the Mercedes? No, I think he's on the on Mercedes as well, so um, they both have pretty, pretty decent brakes. And uh, getting him. Two fantastic races all in one place. Racebot TV, biggest sim racing provider right now in the world. And we are very close to 10,000 subscribers, by the way, on our YouTube page. We, when we do so, we are going to be doing some really cool stuff. So get your friends, tell them to like us and subscribe to us on YouTube. I sound like one of these 15 year old YouTubers right now, David. I feel like something. Hit that like button. But I get what you're saying is exciting things happening here on Racebot. 10,000 is a, a, a nice little milestone. And so if you've got friends who are racing fans, esports fans, or hopefully a bit of both, I'm sure they'd love to follow all of the action that we cover here. Yeah, or if you're setting up your Nam's computer this weekend, you know, so set up a YouTube account, just accidentally get a subscribe. You might actually enjoy watching some racing as well. Fabio Okoye versus Gabriel Perez still going on for the fourth position on track. And well, we've actually got two um, fantastic drivers right now. Fabio Okoye versus Osamu Yamakado right now going at it also for P5 and 6 on track. And these guys are not showing any hint of relenting at all as they enter that second chicane again. Yeah, lap after lap, Gabriel Perez is holding the lead of this pack, but he cannot get away from Fabio Aoki and Osama Yamakado. I wonder if the guys behind are biding their time, uh, 
just taking their lines carefully, maybe looking after their tyres, and they'll just be looking to be in a position to strike later. But there's only eight laps to go, so we've got to stick in there and, and plan it quick. Yeah, on board with Fabio then as they come down towards that final chicane again. Actually, let's have a look from up above, and you can see they're separated right now by about three car lengths each way. Late onto the brakes is for Samuel like Yamakado as they exit the final corner towards turn number one, past the start finish line, they will come again. But to check back in, when you talked about this a moment ago, your battle with second and third place with Martin Arugles and Tim Hendrickson. And look at the lap time between them, and Martin is continuing to pull away at not that big a rate, but it's about a tenth of and a half of a second each lap. Yeah, last lap by for our leader was a 132.4, then a 32.6 for Martin and Aldis, and a 32.7 for Tim Hendrickson. So really only a tenth or so in it, but that gap spreading out just very, very slowly. Anything could still happen. Those gaps are still very close. Yeah, as uh, Daniel Ferris and number uh, four car. That's the uh, Marino Martin Garcia. That's about going on for seventh place on track. I will say one thing, outside of your top 10, there are no battles going on pretty much at all. Everyone's put themselves out, but really it is that second part that we are going to focus on for the time being. If anything happens down below, we will turn back to it. If anything happens down below, we might need to go and see a doctor more. But um, battle for P5, P6 still going on. On board this time, with that number 11 machine, and you just know the, the, the different lines you were talking about earlier, David, and the way that you've got to get out of that corner, and then the downfall itself is Cars. Note the fact that even with the draft of two cars, the summit is not gaining any more than about half a tenth. Yeah, he should be picking up a big draft, but maybe he's just set up with a little bit too much downforce or just not getting that run off the corner. Uh, the casino straight's the longest straight on the track, so the exit out of the hairpin is absolutely critical. And if you just gain half a car length longer on your exit, that can get you up into the draft and then just suck you further forwards. So it's very, very important. This track has remained pretty much unchanged ever since it opened. The only thing that they did change was in 94, and I believe maybe 95 as well, they added possibly the most Mickey Mouse chicane of all time down that casino straight away. And that, I mean, I've seen chicanes in my time, of course, there was a snap reaction off the edge and sent his death. But David, that was possibly the worst chicane I've ever seen. Well, there's a very famous YouTube clip about the first chicane at Essa Schleiden, uh, and that, that one's very, very humorous. That's also a potentially poorly designed chicane for touring cars. But the current layout that we're, we're on, you know, it's been the same since the 80s, practically. And it's produced some good racing and definitely some exciting racing over the years and it's doing so now especially this battle for fourth fifth and sixth you sense just anything could happen between these drivers yeah and daniel barrison got himself past Marina martin garcia i want to have one more look um from garcia's perspective because it looks as though he just either got snap over still on the exit of seven no he just let he allowed daniel barrison to just go past him. i don't quite understand that's an interesting one. Berrison had been catching him at maybe a second or, or even some more per lap. So, but uh, regardless of what's on the line here, I think yeah, fight for your position. Mm, always. As now, here's the interesting part though. Will he be able to catch up to this P456 battle? Uh, so let's have a look at the lap gaps. I mean, he's about half a second a lap faster um, on average compared to Osama Yamakado. But uh, with the laps we've got remaining, unless he's really going to start pushing now, David, I don't think he has enough time to try and get up to that group. Be praying for that pack to go two wide, maybe even three wide, slow each other down every possible opportunity. That's what it's going to take for Daniel Berenson to catch them up before the end. Yeah, as we're having a look, actually, um, back at that battle, we want to go back to talk about your race leader. Of course, when you start leading by 3.2 seconds, you kind of forget about you in a race like this. This is the driver of Josh Thompson down into that final um, chicane right now in the Simulage Radicals Online machine. Exits the final chicane towards turn number one again. And well, 3.4 seconds now is the gap between himself and Marjim. And I've got a feeling he's taken the foot off the pedal a little bit, but not much. 
Yeah, his best lap of 32.3, did a 32.4 last lap, a 32.5 this time. That's all within his best laps, and there's not many other cars out there lapping in the 32s. So he's still still hustling it. He is as well. We're not going to carry on looking at this angle because we have to wait for 21 seconds. That's the difference as well. We got, um, is that a change for position? No, it's not. Just our timing and scoring bugging out on us in there. But, oh, we got a car turned around. That's another 13 car second incident today for Andrew um, Doso. And this is before the champions striking again. Well, he's from Club Ohio. Oh, he loses it on the entrance to the corner. He doesn't even make it to the wall of the champions. I mean, from Ohio, it's not OHIO, it's OHO no for him right now there. As well, David, that car, he's trying to get it back towards Pit Road. I mean, that car is done. That's a bizarre one. That was a very big impact. Often, you know, it's the high curb that catch people out and get too much of the first curb, too much of the second curb, and find themselves in the outside wall. He's locked the rears coming into the corner before he's even you know just immediately on turn in so that was you know, a problem with the gearbox potentially a bad downshift but a rather bizarre incident and not quite what we're used to seeing when we think world champions yeah it's wall uh, the wall before the wall of the champions in fact it's a bollard uh, not bollard concrete block before the wall of the champions that's what i mean uh, back to p4 5 and 6 however as they are now working towards that same corner and Fabio Aoki just pulls out and pulls back in. And Gabriel Perez was taking a big weave trying to break the draft of the cars behind to try to hold that lead. Yep, in towards one they come again. As the thing is for Fabio Aoki right now is he's got to also remember he's got a car behind him, so he can't make too big of a move because otherwise he could end up actually losing position to this driver of Yamakado. Yeah, and I've been watching Yamakado uh, quite quick through the corners. I think he must be running more down force because he's just quick through some of these corners here, but just not with enough in a straight line to launch an attack unless the guys in front start fighting too hard or make a mistake. Yeah. So, we've got ourselves now just a handful of laps to go at the line. There will be three laps remaining in this event. So you're now at the business end of this, and at some point, if your parents are thinking, okay, when is this pass potentially going to happen? We're going to ride on board the open once again in that number five car. Through the hairpin, let's have a look there. What are the lines going to be like for the two of them exiting the corner? Pretty much status quo. Gabriel Perez set himself up very well, and I think like last time, he's probably going to be weaving around a little bit, just trying to dodge the draft but maybe he got a good enough head he doesn't have to worry about that this time. Yeah, doesn't need to at all then. In towards that final chicane again. Behind down your field. Still no battles going on in your mid-pack. Here are your top eight as it stands then with three laps remaining. Josh Thompson leads by 4.1 seconds now over Martin Anoudalis. Tim Hendrickson in third place, remaining in third. He's dropped back 2.2 from the rear of Anoudalis right now. For fourth place, Gabriel Perez. We're having a look at this battle right now. Fabio Aoki in fifth place. Uh, Osama Yamakado did put a bit of pressure right that time by on to Aoki in towards turn number one and two. Daniel Berrison in the seventh position and Mourinho Martin Garcia rounds out the top eight. But as we were talking about just a moment ago there, all of a sudden, Aoki had to go from playing offense to defense. Yeah, the World Cup is over, but this battle between the nations continues. And uh, I wouldn't put it past Yamakoto to be able to get deep on the brakes somewhere. If he can just get a good enough run and stay close enough to Fabio Aoki. Yeah, gap between the um, driver of Yamakoto is currently, well, absolutely nothing. He looks to the outside, takes the wide exit. And the issue is for Aoki as well. He gets a big wiggle on the exit of the hairpin. This could put them under pressure as they work themselves down this back straight. Yeah, big dose of wheel spin trying to get the power down from that Mazda rotary engine. It's not a huge amount of power, but he was still asking for too much for those little rear wheels to be able to handle. However, the driver of the Sami Amakado cannot capsulize. He actually kind of ran a little bit wide himself from the entrance into that airfield. 
so couldn't capitalize on the next hit. Two laps to go in this one to settle things down. Give you an update on Daniel Barrison. He is gaining this group, but not by much. He is still 3.5 back, and he just overshoots turn number one. Ah, oh, commentator's curse strikes. But, uh, yeah, I think what happened back at the hairpin was the Amakado just got too deep under the brake, trying to get in the mirrors of Fabio Aoki, try and scare him, and he might have gotten in his head, but it's just compromised his own line as well. So, I'm just having a look at comments on YouTube. Look for a pumpe, whatever that means. Um, yeah, apparently, air heat pump. Um, so, hello to everyone watching us on social media here today. The gap between Hendrickson and Anubis is down to under two seconds once again, but it'll take a miracle. Or, of course, one of these drivers just putting a little bit too little fuel into the car. We don't often see it, David, but this track you are full pelt for about 65% of the lap. Consequent to that, um, some drivers don't realize that this is a higher fuel burn track compared to others. And of course, with the um, different wing angles that you can use as well here, the higher the wing, the more drag, the more fuel you Correct, yeah. Uh, unlike something like uh, Monza, people don't think of this as a high consumption track necessarily, but it is because when you're on the throttle, you're on full throttle, there isn't the longest sweeping corners. It is just go, stop, go, stop, and that burns three fuel. White flag is out. One more turn around this track as well. Yamakado looks to the outside in towards turn number one, tries to make a move. Not quite, but you can see that he's now in desperation mode. White flag is out, elbows are out, and uh, you'd say sixth or fifth, just go for it. Uh, the position's up for grabs, put it all on the line. I want to see some action. Yeah, however, out front, Joss Thompson heads himself into that hairpin for the final time. Well, he didn't start this race on pole position. He's had to work for it. Got himself past Martin Anoudlis to take the race lead. And now he's got one more sequence of corners to go as he works himself down the casino straight away for the final time. He's already doing the weaving. He's already slowing it down. He does not want to put this driver a lap down into the final corner. Final time for him. And he will win in the Pro Master Championship here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Josh Thompson is your race winner. Great drive, consistent. We just didn't see too much of him because he's by himself, but we didn't see too many mistakes either. So that was a well-deserved win. Let's go back though. Uh, well, it's all calmed down. It's calmed down too much. Uh, Martin does come home second place. Tim Hendrickson in third. Gabriel Perez looks as though he's going to win that best of the rest category. Final corner, final time for him. Exit for the championship game. He'll come home fourth place. Fabio Aoki in fifth place. And then uh, Yamakado will come home in sixth. Daniel Berrison closes down a little bit further, but he has to settle for seventh place. And Martin Garcia will come home in eighth. Bit of a wait now to Chris Hoagman, who's going to come home in ninth place. And then it's a 21 second wait. Don Lott, who will round out your top 10. Almost all the drivers are through now. Let's go back and have a look at Lot. He's into the final corner. And well, David, he had that spin earlier on, of course. Trying to find an apex and couldn't do so earlier. And he can only manage P10 here. Yeah, I think they'd want better than that. But in the grand scheme of everyone who started, I think getting to the end, well, it's not the worst result ever. Although you always want to be in a battle and pushing for the win. Tenth place, maybe not the worst result for John Lott. Well, let's have a look then at your final race results here from beautiful Quebec in Canada. After all is said and done, Josh Thompson takes victory by 4.2 seconds over Martin Onoudoulos. Third place will be Tim Hendrickson. Fourth, Gabriel Perez. Fifth place, Fabio Aoki. Sixth, Osama Yamakado, Daniel Berrison in seventh place, Moreno, Martin Garcia in eighth, Chris Homan in ninth, and John Lott rounds out your top ten. Thompson, of course, winning after starting outside of the front row. Margin started on that front row, however, he turned our attention back, and that's when you see the real blows here today. Number of drivers finished one lap down, Ryan Moore, Will Kurt, and Santiago Lemio. I got that one out in the end. 
Um, then you've got yourself with Ty Reed, Andrew Bedozo, Paolo Bonacera, Fabio Birchold, David Villa, David Villa even. And then the ones that we really need to talk about, Ollie Peacock, we saw his flash earlier. Uh, and that was down at the hairpin. And Thomas Jordan, first phase all the way down to last. We're going to step aside quickly here on Racebot TV. And we'll be back with post-race coverage after this. So, you want to race in NASCAR. The road starts here. Introducing the eNASCAR at Night Series powered by iRacing. This is the gateway for all aspiring 13 to 16 year olds. Starting June 20th, ignite your dreams of one day racing in the top tiers of NASCAR. Go to www.iracing.com slash ignite for full details. So what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. Four more kilometers. Oh, oh there we go! They caught! They caught! This time, like the last time, I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to run. Cronky! Sadly, he's trying to hook his off! Sinjur throws the block, and he will keep him behind him. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Montreal, Quebec. Post-race coverage. Before we go any further, though, let's have a look at the start of this event. Because, well, if your name's the driver of Thomas Jordan, you are not happy with this one. Here we are, on board of him. Waiting for those likes to go great. No, he is. So it gets a pretty good jump at the start of this one, but loses first place in towards turn number one. That's number six machine, TNT racing car. Then into turn number two, there was the first hit for him. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see drivers warming past, warming past about now. And into turn number three and four, second hit for Thomas Jordan. It's always heartbreaking when you have that sort of thing happening, David. Yeah, it didn't get exactly the start he wanted, but then just the, the contact wasn't malicious, it, but it ended his race before it really got away, which is unfortunate. Yeah, and there's the second contact out of the event for him. What we have got the drivers at all, we've got eight drivers at the very least. That is the driver of Josh Thompson. David, take it away. Well, Josh. From third on the grid, how did you see those first couple of corners? Uh, pretty steady, to be honest. I knew I messed up qualifying. I dropped a few attempts in the last chicane, and it was a bit of a shame. I knew I had the pace. Uh, start, I got an actual initially quite a good launch, so I went to the outside, and the time had quite a slow getaway. Went to the outside, and I know what to do is like it. It funnels out quite a lot, and there's always a lot of concertina hitting and uh, punting away. So I checked up quite a lot and I still managed to hit him. And I was like, there's no way my nose cone was that close to him because I knew I slowed down quite a lot. So looking back, I knew now I know it was net cone. But after that, I was really cautious because I thought, thought I got a front wind damage. Because obviously I'm not driven this car loads. Tires take a long time to get going. All right, and uh, once you got around past the hairpin, what were you thinking about with the draft? How far back does that go and how difficult is it to break the draft in these cars? Probably like seven, eight temps in this car. You can still pick, you pick a little bit up on the second back. You can, if you've got the delta on, you can see it going to green a little bit when you're in the toe. But no, it's really power. The place I find it the most powerful is as you come out the first sector into the middle of chicane, and then obviously onto the back straight into the last chicane. But once you break, I knew I had the pace in the middle sector and through the last chicane to break it. That was where I was pulling away the most. So looking up, I knew I had pace in reserving those areas which I could use to somehow break the gap. And 
as soon as I broke the gap and the tail, I knew it was a bit more straightforward. And how tricky are the curbs around here? We saw a few people come unstuck, as is inevitable in the Wall of Champions. Did you have to be cautious there? Yeah, it's completely different driving style, this car, uh, over the curbs. There's some you can use, but you have to hit it perfectly. There's a few times in the, like the first heart, the first chicane to come out of the first sector, a few times there, I'd clip the curb wrong and it spits the rear out and it nearly hits the wall. And as soon as you get a zero X in this car, it's, the, the suspension is usually wrapped under. It's just really sensitive, which is quite good. But no, it was quite good. I uh, didn't really have to take it too cautious because I knew why I needed to break, and knew where to turn in with the amount of laps I've done this week. All right, Josh Thompson, our winner by four seconds. Uh, anyone you need to thank and any shout outs you need to do? Yeah, so you guys were broadcasting. Um, radical in line as well. going to be quite a key one here, uh, especially Rob Cuss for getting me the old retro um, paint scheme for the car, as I didn't have one for this week, and I wanted to get at least some radical sponsorship on that. It's the old sponsors. Awesome. Thank you so much for dropping in and having a chat with us. Yeah, thank you very much, you Josh Thompson. Thank you, Josh. Um, he's gone already to call um, Steel Series up and say, well, you're back on the car. Can we have some money now, please, David? Yeah, indeed. Well, that is, however, all we have got time for here today. Thank you so much for being a part of our coverage. Don't forget, of course, International GT3 is still going on here on Racebot TV. That guy has been David Haynes. I have been Will Vincent. And before we go, as ever, I want to give a shout out to Instagram Ballard, trackcams22.com. Also to Simon Grossman, appgeneering.com, Andreas Warner, and one designer, Nick Thyssen for Racebot TV live timing and scoring. And all I have left to say is goodbye from Montreal. <laughs>